Good morning. Thank you all for being here today. A very special welcome if you are a guest or a visitor with us. We're so glad that you chose to join us this morning, and we hope that uh, you have a warm welcome, and we hope you'll come back again when you have the chance. A couple of announcements in the yellow bulletin insert um, that I want to lift up for you. Um, first off is that um, Vacation Bible School starts tonight, and it goes through Thursday. So um, things are going to be real busy and a lot of fun here at church this week. Um, and I do know that they were looking for a few family leaders um, in, uh, to, to help out with that. So if you're available from around 6 to 8 um, tonight through Thursday night, uh, we'd love it if you would uh, maybe talk to Julie, and she can let you know what's involved in that. Um, and it's a lot of fun. Hope you can join us. We have a sign-up in the back for God's Work Our Hands t-shirts. Just a reminder that God's Work Our Hands is a service day that the ELCA helps sponsor, and um, uh, it, it's basically a way for us to give back to the community. Um, I know we, we're already doing that in a lot of ways, but this is a kind of an intentional way to do that. It'll take place after worship on September 9th, 8th, 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 don't show up on the 9th. Um, It'll, be, it'll happen on the 8th, um, but we can order t-shirts with Our Savior's Lutheran Church printed on the back. Um, if you want to do that, there's a sign-up back there. It's, um, it's due on August 11th, so if you're interested, don't wait too long to sign up. Um, the cost will be $20. And finally, um, we will be having some ice cream in the fireside room following our worship service today. Um, and that will be a great chance for you to talk with some of our youth who went to Puerto Rico and did a service trip down there. And they are going to come up here in just a minute for, um, to, to tell us about what they did and how it, um, how it impacted them. There are a number of other great announcements in the bulletin that I'd love for you to read when you have a chance. But for now, I invite our mission trip youth up for their presentation. Good morning. I'd like to apologize. I have a cold. So, um, oh, okay. The adults aren't coming. They're scared. Okay. <laughs> Um, our trip began uh, as tourists. We left Osage on June 27th. Uh, we left here at midnight. Our flight was at 520 and because of ball games and stuff decided to wait and so we left here at midnight which was very interesting. We flew first to Atlanta and then on to San Juan, Puerto Rico. Once there we got to our hotel and settled in and spent the next three days exploring San Juan and the beach. San Juan is a beautiful city filled with history and wonderful people and great food. Sunday morning we got up, picked up our rental cars, which I have to, we, we, we like to share with everybody. Our rental cars, one of them had five miles on it, one of them had six miles on it, and one of them had seven miles on it. So it was pretty interesting. I don't think they knew we were going on a mission trip. So um, we, were, we were quite the sight. We looked like a car commercial. Um, so we picked those up and we headed down to our mission site in Ponce, Puerto Rico. San Juan sits on the northeast side of the island where, I'm sorry, it's Ponce, I'm saying it wrong. Um, Ponce is on the south central part of the island. When Hurricane Maria hit on September 20th, 2017, the city of Ponce was still on the rebound from Hurricane Irma that had struck just two weeks before that. The company we work with is a mission trip uh, a mission trip company and it's called Team Effort. Team Effort sets up the work sites, feeds us, houses us, and leads us in worship and then in service work. They have a core team that works the area all summer and we were blessed with an amazing team this year. There was one other church there that week. It was a slower week for them I think because it, it uh, encompassed the 4th of July. Um, but the other church was from Bowden, right? Bowden, Georgia. And um, it was interesting because we're the green devils. So every time we go on a mission trip, I always tell the kids, let's just leave the green devils at home. You know, you just, you don't want to offend anybody and people don't understand sometimes when they see a devil on your shirt why you're wearing it. And so one morning, one of the boys came out with an, oh, it didn't have the picture, but it just said Osage Green Devils. And so I wanted to check just to make sure 
you know, should I make them turn it inside out? Or because I've done that before. Well, she said, no, she goes, I think it's okay, you know. Well, 10 minutes later, one of the girls from the other school walked out with Bowden Red Devils across her shirt. <laughs> so I thought that was great. So they were a wonderful, um, sweet group that we, uh, we don't work directly with them, but we interacted with them during our, our downtime. So uh, their youth leader's father was originally from Puerto Rico, and their um, other chaperone spoke fluent Spanish. She was the honors Spanish teacher at their high school. So that was interesting. They, they had one up on us on that. The neighborhood we worked in in Ponce was called Belica. It was a very poor area. Team Effort's been working. This was their ninth year in the area, so they were there before the hurricane. Um, it, it took what little they had. Hurricane Maria came and, and really wiped this area. Um, it was very difficult to see. It's been almost two years, and there's just still so much damage and so much hurt in the area that it was, it was pretty tough for us. Um, we worked at, together with the other church, we worked at four different sites. Bowden worked at painting at the church that hosted us and at the school, and also working in Belica at the neighborhood, uh, painting a woman's home. We worked at two different homes. One was owned by a man named Nelson and his wife, whose name I can never remember. Who remembers that? Oh, probably Sammy. She's not here this morning. Um, but anyway, we built a new gate there. They had uh, a group before us had put up a new fence, and the gate was very old and dilapidated, I think, between time and the hurricane. So we took the old gate down and built a new gate. And we also then took the tin from the old gate because they recycle and reuse everything, and we pounded it straight, and we used that to build a shade carport area on the side of their house. Um, they don't have a lot of uh, lawn. There's not a lot of trees left, so there's not a lot of shade. And as hot as it was here this week, that's how it is there, so it was nice to give them some needed shade. Um, then we also worked at a man uh, home. His name was Pedro. It was two doors down from Nelson's house. And Pedro's house um, was probably the most interesting home that I've ever worked in. Um, it is built up. The back of it was cement. The front part was all wood. The floor is just plywood. And because of the storm and everything that's um, the moisture, it was like walking on a trampoline. I really don't know how it held his furniture up. We decided Jesus was doing that. So um, the group before us had tore out the one side of his living room and had redone that. We did the other side, which was his bedroom. So they literally took out the floor, they built up new supports, and put in a new floor. Then they took the wall down along the one side of his house that was just because the way it sat was shaded more and pretty rotten. Um, from him not having a roof. He did have a roof by the time we got there, but um, I think it was just from age, again, and moisture, and you could see through pieces on his, on his wall, and it's just one piece of siding. They took that out and built him a new wall also, and then we started the ceiling because there was no ceiling when we got there. It was just empty, empty rafters. So they got um, a lot done. Team Effort told us in the beginning of the week that we were there to make things livable, not perfect. And that was very hard for us because we come from homes that we take for granted. Um, so it was, it was hard for us to not be able to do everything that we wanted to make it totally work in, working and totally functional. But we did, um, I know, leave them a lot better than, than when we had gotten there. And we left very humble and very grateful. Uh, these trips always bring as much to us as we do to them, and I am ever thankful for the time that we get to do this work and share Jesus' love. We took a great group of kids. We have most of them here with us this morning. As a church and a community, we can be very proud of these kids. Um, on our trip was Sammy Sharper, Michaela Egan, Brittany Bear. Talia Stengel, Emily Johnson, Luke Sharper, Desmond Teets, and Andrew Thayer. Uh, Sammy and Talia are out of town this weekend, so we're not able to join us. The adults, or I would like to share quick, I did get a thank you from Team Effort, 
And I would like to read it to you because this really says a lot about the kids that we take. I have never taken a group from Osage that I have, and I don't want to say disappointed, but that has not just worked and worked and worked and worked. And every place we go, I always have people comment to me how hard these kids work, so we can be very proud of that. Dear Our Savior's Lutheran Family, Team Effort wants to say thank you to your church for sending the youth to serve on the mission trip in Puerto Rico last week. They represented your church well as they replaced flooring, siding, finished constructing a fence and a gate, built a covered patio area, and landscaped homes. You should be proud of their willingness to build relationships with the people of Belica. We know many lives in Belica were changed by their words and actions. It was exciting to see your youth put their faith into action. Because of their works, lives were changed both in the people we worked with as well as the participants in your group. The Team Effort staff thanks you for supporting your group on their summer mission trip. We enjoyed serving alongside of them. So um, again, our thanks extends to you, the congregation. We couldn't do this without your help and your love and your support, and we thank you so much for that. And I'd also like to take a minute to thank the adults that went. Um, we had almost a one-on-one -on -one ratio, which was amazing. I always encourage parents to do this with their children. I think it's so important. I think it's um, something special that you just don't get anywhere else in your life. So I'd like to thank the adults. We had uh, Tracy Sharper, Steph Teets, Mike and Rebecca Johnson, Rob Stangle, and Elizabeth Thayer. Did I miss any? Yeah, I got everybody. Um, so anyway, we um, just had an amazing week. We are going to be sharing more in the back after service. We invite you back there for ice cream. And we would just again like to thank you all very much. They'll share in the back, I promise. Please stand for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom our hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 808, Lord Jesus, You Shall Be My Song.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Eternal God, you draw near to us in Christ, and you make yourself our guest. Amid the cares of our lives, make us attentive to your presence, that we may treasure your word above all else. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from Genesis, chapter 18, verses 1 through 10a. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, I, will, I find favor with you. Do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves and after you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 15. We will read it responsibly. O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who may dwell on your holy hill? 
those who walk blamelessly and do what is right and speak the truth from their heart, who do not slander with their tongue and do no evil to their friends, nor take up a reproach against their neighbors, in whose eyes the wicked are despised, but who honor those who fear the Lord, who stand by their oath even to their hurt, who do not lend money at interest and do not take a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be moved. The second reading is from Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 28. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you, who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshy body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commissions that was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of, his myst of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. The word of the Lord.
Thank you, that was wonderful. I invite us to rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? the words of eternal life. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now as Jesus and his disciples went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha. You are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. So I'm sure that some of you have started to realize this a little bit. I've been here just over a year, so it's long enough to figure this out. I can be incredibly distracted. Some people have really great memories and really great focus, and I was not endowed with that particular set of skills. It's one of the many reasons I'm grateful for Pastor Cindy and her attention to details. I'm sure some of you have at different times seen me walk out of my office, stand in the hall with this sort of look on my face, and then turn around and go back in my office to retrace my steps and see if I can figure out why I left my office in the first place. The other day, I went down the hall to get a cup of coffee, and I forgot my coffee cup. I wish I could say I was making that up. I've done my best to make sure that I can find ways to focus. And I've tried to build kind of systems to help me remember things. But there are still things that fall through the cracks. It has taken a lifetime of practice so far, and I'm sure it will continue to take a lifetime of practice. And to be honest, I used to feel a lot of shame around this. And I still do on occasion. But the thing is that I know I am not alone. We live in an incredibly distracted culture. We are bombarded with 24-hour news coverage, most of which is not good news to hear. We have instant access to entertainment. We have advertisements tailored to us with information gathered in a thousand different ways. We have TVs and tablets and smartphones and radios and smart watches, each offering us a chance to distract ourselves and escape responsibility. Not only are we distracted, but we also worry a lot, too. We worry about how we're going to pay our medical bills, or our student loans, or our rent and mortgage. We worry about war, terrorism, immigration, and civil rights. We worry about sports teams. We worry about addictions, family conflict, and achievements. We worry if the fields will be ready in time to harvest or if the new recipe will turn out. We worry about the past. We worry about the present. We worry about the future. And even the things we look forward to, like family holidays or weddings, are fraught with worry over details. Will we have enough food? Where will everybody sit? 
What if so-and-so shows up? You know who I'm talking about. In our world today, I truly believe that one of the hardest and most countercultural things we can possibly do is to simply stop and breathe and make space in this present moment to listen. Listen to what God is saying. Listen to what is going on around us. And I actually take a little relief knowing that Jesus' friends dealt with some of the same issues. In our gospel today, we get this brief encounter that doesn't usually fit in with what we think of as a gospel narrative. There's no miracle here. There's no real preaching or monologue happening. There's no divine symbolism. There's no wrestling with religious and social leaders. It's a scene I imagine a lot of us can relate to because, it turns out, worry and distraction are not exclusive to the 21st century American experience. One person is choosing to overwork while the other is choosing to sit and listen. And so we can ask ourselves the question, which one is right? So I feel I need to say that there is work that needs to be done. That's absolutely true. We have bills that need to be paid, food that needs to be prepared, and it's not a bad thing to want everything to turn out okay. I'm also not saying that you need to throw your smartphone in the river the next time you walk by. But I am going to say that when worry and distraction come at the expense of the present moment, it begins to take away from the joy of life the experience of authentic relationship with God and with other people, and it begins to take away from the awareness of God's love which you already have given to you. When we're worried about so many things and distracted by so many things, it takes us out of the present moment. And God's love can only be experienced concretely in the present moment just as the love we share with each other can only be expressed in the present moment, in the here and now. Memories of the past and promises of the future, they can be very helpful. But the present moment is where God is right now. The chaos of worry and distraction is not just a psychological problem, it's a theological one, too. If you are distracted from the love that God already has for you, you can begin to get distracted from the work that God is doing and fail to participate in the work that you are invited into. When we are worried about everything that we need to get done, we can begin to forget that God already loves you just as you are, worried, distracted, and all, and focus so much on what we need to do that we forget that God loves you already. We may very well spend our whole lives worried about whether or not we've done enough. But here's the deal. God has done everything that you need. You are saved. You are loved and you are gathered together in the kingdom of God. You are called as part of the communion of sinners and saints we call the family of Christ. Nothing you can do can earn that place, and nothing you can do can make that place be taken away from you. Instead, we find that the place is given to you through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And before we move on, I want to acknowledge that worry and distraction are not necessarily inescapable or preventable, even for faithful followers of Christ. You don't have to look very far in the Gospels to find the disciples and Jesus' friends distracted and worried about things. We live in an age where anxiety, depression, ADHD, OCD, and a number of other mental diagnoses are on the rise, and they can leave those affected with a lot of shame around these verses. Jesus here is not condemning Martha. 
He is not trying to shame her or to make her feel badly for the work that she is doing. He very well certainly benefited from her hard work, just as we benefit from hard work of others that goes unacknowledged or unappreciated. But if you find yourself in a state of anxiety and you find yourself asking, but, but Brian, what if I can't stop worrying? What if I can't focus or live undistracted? Well, I'm here to tell you that God loves you. You are not condemned, shamed, or excluded from God's love for any sort of worry or distraction you might face. No illness, even a mental illness, will disqualify you from God's love. Just as Paul says in our Colossians reading today, you have Christ in you, and where Christ is, the love of God is too. So Jesus is not condemning Martha, but instead, I believe, trying to help Martha see that her work and her worry and her distraction do nothing to earn God's love. Busy, worrying, distracted Martha is just as loved as still focused Mary. And as followers of Christ, we believe that the Holy Spirit is always in the process of reorienting our lives to follow Christ and live a holy life. The fancy church word for that is sanctification. But never mistake a holy life for a beloved life. You are loved by God already, despite whatever worries, distractions, or sins you may experience. This world will worry and distract you, and that's, that's just reality. But this world does not define you. This world is continuing to be formed by God's loving hands. You are gathered into this family of God. You are fed with the body and blood of Christ, and you are washed in the waters of baptism. You are claimed, and you are loved. And so if you worry, which I know you will, you don't have to worry about that. And if you get distracted, which I know you will, remember that God will never be distracted from the love and devotion that God has for you, or for all people. Amen. I invite us to rise as we sing together, um, Give Me Jesus, 770 in your hymn. Just about the 
With the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Joining our voices with God's people around the world, let us offer our prayers for those in need. We pray for the church you have gathered and each person in it. We pray for all people that they would know the love you have for them and would use the gifts you have given them for service to others. Lord, in your mercy. We pray that your word would find a dwelling place in each and every heart. As we live each day, help us to boldly proclaim through our words and our actions the good news of Christ's life, death, and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the sick, the hungry, the imprisoned, those living with HIV AIDS, those awaiting the birth of children, and all people in need, especially those on our hearts and our minds today, that Christ, our great physician, care for all who are in distress. For those who are worried and distracted, overworked and underpaid, we ask for your peace and justice. Lord, in your mercy. We pray that as you have given to us abundantly, that you would send us to proclaim your abundant love, Use our hands, feet, and voices to do your will and show others the love we have already received from you. As we go, make us mindful and grateful of the great cloud of witnesses who have gone before us. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, you hear the prayers of your people even before they are spoken. We commend these and all our prayers to you, trusting in your abundant mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share that peace with one another. We will now receive our offering, giving back to God to say thanks for his giving to us abundantly.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Communion this morning will be around the table. Uh, the first weekend of the month, we celebrated communion by uh, intention we, because we had the polka band here. So uh, this weekend, we are celebrating around the table. All baptized Christians, regardless of denomination, are invited to come to the table. If you are not ready to receive communion this morning, you are invited to come forward for an offering. Um, Gluten-free wafers and individual cups of grape juice are available um, upon request. Come to the table for all is now ready. I invite the assistants to come forward. <laughs> 